just a little bit about me. So um, I've been working at Catapult BI probably five or six years now. The last few years I've been working uh, very specifically on data management um, practice areas and the last 18 months I've done some work for Department of Education, Skills and Employment and just more recently at Services Australia doing these things called uh, data quality and risk assessments. So at um, education, that's what they were called at um, Services Australia. We customised this process some more and there it was called a current practice evaluation, but they're essentially the same thing. And their intent is to look at um, data management practice and, and perform a level of assessment over it. So um, the reason why education started that is they were doing a data integration project, but they also had a data strategy where they were looking to um, understand the state of their current data assets. And Services Australia, the CDO, was wanting to um, sort of understand the business challenges and actually open up those doors with business to want to find out what sort of services they could provide. So, uh, so what's a, what is a data quality risk assessment? So it's um, the name can be a little bit misleading. So it's really a snapshot in time of what a business area is doing in their data management practice. So this is how they're dealing with data quality issues. What are, what are they doing in terms of sharing and controlling access to data? Uh, it is a, um, uh, um, not a, quali not a um, quantitative, uh, not a profiling exercise. It is a qualitative one. It's a discussion. It cons considers policies, legislation and a risk rating is applied to the data management practice areas that are assessed. And generally the scope um, needs to be narrowed down to just the core data assets used by business area because business areas might actually do a whole range of different things and touch a whole lot of different um, types and sets of data. So for this assessment, you do need to narrow down the scope somewhat. And so this is the, the basic methodology of what that's about. It's doing a bit of research. So normally it's, there was myself and a colleague doing um, some this, this work, the assessment work. Uh, some research would happen first, which is understanding what's the purpose of this, that these data assets, uh, what's the legislation that governs the use, uh, and also a bit about the organisation, what are the policies that are internally in the department or agency that have to, um, they have to abide by. Then it's an interview process and a structured set of questions over some focus areas. Those, the interview participants um, are going to be identified in, in an introductory session, um, maybe just 30 minutes talking about what this is about. Um, and those will be subject matter experts. These are people that work with the data day to day and have a really good knowledge about what their business area does with the data. As a result of the, the interview and answer to these questions, the hard part is the risk assessment bit which is actually um, per question, there is a risk description and then the, and a, uh, basically a risk score gets generated as a result of this risk assessment. It, it takes into consideration interview responses, research and industry best practice. You need to have a bit of knowledge about what, you know, what's good data management practice and what's, what's not. And then the business area finally get a report at the end that gives them some uh, high level sort of recommendations and actions that they can take to address the high risk areas. And if the administering area so chooses, they could track those um, that they're following up on those recommendations. So as I said, there's a structured set of um, questions. It just so happens for Services Australia, it was six questions in six focus areas, but that's completely customizable. And um, it could be that if you have, uh, for example, data modeling and data architecture were not focus areas, that were asked in this particular questionnaire, but they did, you know, you could expand this or shrink it according to the needs of the business. Uh, the risk matrix is a means just to make sure that you're assessing those risks in a consistent and repeatable way. And um, as I said, this all gets put together in a recommendations report. And um, it was pretty clear early on that um, this couldn't be a self-assessment and the reason why it can't be self-assessed, I think, is because it needs to be that um, having that external look at the practices and what they do, having a bit of understanding about what's good and bad data management practices. And for some business areas that are quite data illiterate, um, they're not going to be in a position to be able to um, rank their own or rate their own risks. Um, the six focus areas that we did at uh, Services Australia are these, but as I said, that's completely customizable and you could expand that. 
uh, these were sort of the, the predominant themes that um, uh, the business area were interested in. Now, the, there's a couple of sample questions here. And the, the tricky part and the most useful bit here is that the question is um, aimed at drawing out the conversation. So it's getting those business people in the room and asking them the question that sparks the conversation. They're not yes, no responses. They're not, no, I've got five data assets that integrate into, you know, my area where I spit out 100 reports. Those responses, although sometimes they're useful information, they're not um, really what you're trying to delve into. So the risk description is something that the practitioner, the person doing the interview, has in the back of their mind what you're trying to draw out and find out a bit more about. And often what happens in these interviews is one question gets asked and you might hear a suite of responses to five other questions. And that's okay, and that's deliberately how it's run to get the conversation going and actually working out what, um, what's, what they're really doing day to day with their data. So each one of those questions has a risk description and each one of those gets a rating and a score essentially, which is aggregated up. And then for the whole uh, focus area, then you pop out with a, um, with a, a score and this chart is sort of the, the executive summary of what happens there. So in a nutshell, what's the summary of your platform and storage? Is it, a, is it stable? Is it secure? Is it about to be unsupported? Um, and just, you know, one or two sentences in a nutshell for executives to look at that and understand. Shouldn't be any surprises to the people that were interviewed. This is what they said. Then um, the recommendations right there. And then the fine grained detail about how we got there is all appended into the document if they want to, if they question it, I'm quite sure. So, and the accompanying that is this thing called a risk um, heat map, which basically pushes those focus areas onto a heat map. And the way to interpret this is um, across the uh, x-axis, that, that's consequence. So the further to the right you are on this, this is about the impact to your business area if you don't um, put any controls in place. So in other words, the things on the right hand side are, should be more important to you um, from in your business area. And the likelihood of these risks being realized is your know, like is on the left hand, the y-axis. And um, basically you're hoping to drive things down by the things you do. So you're trying to get down to a lower on the chart. Now there's obviously going to be risks that you know can't be fully mitigated. So it's really just a, um, gives a bit of a snapshot about where, where you should be focusing your energies. Uh, we put some rigour around how much time does this take to perform. Services Australia are looking at offering this as a service. So um, it really does only take a short amount of time from the business perspective and we deliberately did it that way. Of course, if you expanded out those focus, focus areas and the question set, you would take more time. So it's a good idea to focus that on what you need to. But we found two one-hour sessions with two to three people in the business area was enough to get through all those questions. And then a couple of weeks of um, the practitioners actually preparing the report and doing a peer review. An important step at the bottom there is to walk them through all the results back with the people that you interviewed to make sure you didn't misinterpret things and um, there shouldn't be any too, too many surprises and they should understand um, the risk rationale and why you got to that conclusion. So um, the benefits, so there's probably a few more things I've just put it in a nutshell because my time limits, I hope I'm going okay for time. Uh, so understanding data risk and look, depending on how data literate the business area is, um, they, they're often incidentally educated about good data management practice along the way, um, just by doing this process and they might be, um, uh, become aware of risks that they just weren't uh, known, they didn't know before. Uh, the recommendations can be really simple tasks, which can be really quick wins, which gives them a really um, positive, um, you know, they're addressing some risk, which might be just cross-skilling. Not the only Joe in our team knows how to run those or build those reports. Um, maybe we should do something about that. And it's, they, these are small things they can do to improve. Uh, then there's obviously bigger ticket things that will come out in recommendations as well. Give them mechanisms to, uh, uh, means to link to resources. So this means if you engaging with the business teams, you can actually point them in the right direction of communities of interest, like this one, or um, the data quality team who, who are using a data profiling tool, or 
you know, putting them in, um, pointing in the right direction to policies, frameworks, and those sort of things. And I think um, an important part is that um, the sort of engagement with the organisation. So it's that um, talking to them about data management practices actually is a main means to get them um, uh, thinking about it and bring bring them on board with the with the journey. So from the bigger picture, the benefit of doing this sort of thing is, especially if you do it more broadly, is you can pick an, um, uh, high risk areas, common risk areas, and then target training, target where you want to address your efforts to try and fix things. Um, and then from the DQRA recommendations themselves, by giving recommendations to business areas, you can help stop those siloed business activities, which is all about instilling that appropriate culture. And also build evidence if um, you want to roll out a metadata initiative or a um, data quality tool that's used across the whole organisation, then you're, you're collecting evidence to support that um, endeavour that's a more organisation you know, viewpoint. And the communications, I think, is one of the best things about this. It's getting you in touch and bringing business on board. And another output from the data quality risk assessment process is you get a little snapshot. When we define the scope of what data um, that comes in and out of a business area, you get that little picture of the data landscape. And that's really useful information to feed into your data catalogue, data asset register, or whatever you've got to start building up that big picture of everything in the organisation. Really quickly, I don't know whether I'm out of time, the, the findings, just a few things that I thought I'd highlight today. One was um, the participants were often um, uh, open and revealing about what they do with their data management practices. Maybe not initially, but that interview style is very important about getting people talking. And uh, I think it's almost, I, I think of it as like a therapy session where they can get off their chest yes, you know, we have to tweak that data to fix it for that report over there and all those sort of things. Um, I think they're wanting to tell someone about this. They're wanting the assistance and support, but there's not always the mechanisms in the organisation to do that. And they're quite pleased to receive an outside perspective of their understanding. They might think they're doing everything great, but um, having someone else come in and, and have an outside perspective can help them um, clarify whether they've got the right understanding and all the gravity of the risks that they you know, don't understand. And some of them were very proactively making changes as a result of just talking about this and saying, oh yes, you know, we do need to you know, do it across filling or just grab out that documentation we had somewhere and, and make sure that's up to date. And um, so there's some, yeah, some really proactive things that came from this. Concerns on the other side were about the recommendations about what what sort of support they're going to get to implement them. And some um, business areas might be so overwhelmed with the amount of work they've got to do to fix up their data management practices. They will be concerned about trying to do that. So the communications and messaging that needs to go with this needs to make sure they're comfortable with what the ramifications of this process is. And then there's the lines of responsibility. That's a little bit of it in a big organisation anyway, there is a little bit of, oh, well, I just touched this bit of data and that fits their responsibility and that's not my responsibility, right? So there's, um, and I see the, at Services Australia, the Data Stewards Network was a really nice starting point to build that culture of shared responsibility. And I saw an instance where this worked very well, where um, someone, an area had got so um, good at analysis of their own data. It's not their data, it's someone else's, but they were doing essentially reporting but when they found data quality issues, they could trace it all the way back to the source and feed that information back. Not their responsibility. However, they're actually building up, you know, they're, they're building up the data quality for the whole organisation um, by, um, you know, actually having that traceability, even though it's not their responsibility. And I think that was just a really uh, positive thing that comes out of this, where that, that culture of shared responsibility, I think, is a, an important thing. So look, I've got. Um, oh, you right on time, am I? <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> so look, I um, uh, there's lots, lots of other interesting things that came out of this process, but I think the I'm really interested to talk about just that way of engaging with business to get them 
talking about data management practices and improving, and whether it's data quality data, um, metadata, there's lots of different, um, just getting the data governance process in place. Where, you know, what's, what's the, um, what's a mechanism? And this was one way of actually delving in and finding out what businesses were really doing. So okay. that's all for me. Thanks, Sarah.